is allowing us to have this time together to worship uh, our Savior and to have fellowship with each other and have an opportunity just to say, you know, Merry Christmas to, yeah. to each other. Amen. And um, Feliz Navidad. Hey, you know, Feliz Navidad. Feliz See? Navidad. That's right, Bob. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are family. Amen. Yeah. It's so we good are. with, yes. with family. Yes. And so, um, hey, well, you know, my intention is, you know, I don't want to have a, a long, drawn-out meeting. I know you probably still have some things that you want to do this mm -hmm. evening. Uh, but thank you for, you know, pausing, taking this opportunity uh, and time out your schedule to to be with us and yeah. to uh, and to share in this uh, in this in this occasion. And so uh, let's just have prayer, all right? Father, thank you so much for our time together. We do, we do worship and we do exalt and we do lift up yes. Christ our Lord. And we yes. thank you, Lord, that yes. you were Lord at birth. You were always yes. Lord. Yes. And so we thank you for your yes. Lordship over our lives. And so we, we yield and we surrender. We acquiesce, yes. Lord. Lord, to your Lordship. And we say that, have your way in our lives and be yes. Lord over all of our lives, Father, in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. And so we come to celebrate our, our, our Savior. Yeah. We come to celebrate the King of Glory, the King of Kings, yeah, the Lord of Lords. Lord. Yeah. We come to celebrate Emmanuel. Mm. God who yeah. is yeah. 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 We ask your blessings upon our time and that you would yes, encourage our hearts today. Lord, as we spend time just sharing, testifying, and Lord, uh, hearing uh, from your word, I know that you will speak to us in this time we have together. Yes, so I Lord. commit it all to you. Be honored, be praised, be yes, uh, glorified with all that we say and do. And Lord, yes, may this evening be a sweet Savior unto you. And amen. we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, amen. Um, hey, you know, for a little bit, you know, we we'll continue the fellowship. If anybody has a testimony or just want to share, you know, uh, what's on your heart, uh, let's just do that for for a while, and uh, we'll and we'll transition from there. Well, you know, I'm giving the testimony, uh, bits and pieces of my testimony, the fact that I'm still here and I'm looking at you all's beautiful faces, hearing your voices. God is so good. I can't ask any more of him. I can't ask for all the love that he's showing me through my people that love me, my family of HFGWC. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just blessed, and I know that I am, and you are. To be Amen. Around. This family Amen. is a Amen. true family, and I'm, I'm grateful to God for it. Continue prayers and blessings and peace be upon all of you. Thank you. you know, <laughs> and health and strength. And strength of one another. I'm so encouraged. Keep continuing encouraging yourselves and each other and me. And I will do likewise. Amen. Amen. I have something to say today. Um, My daughter-in-law had a baby. She had a baby. Um. December the 5th and the baby was due next year, April. So the baby was premature. So the baby wow. wear, when the baby was born, I think we were an ounce. No, the baby were a, 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 pound, and a, a pound and six ounces now. Nice. The doctor told nice. my son that the baby eyes going to be open maybe next week or a month. The baby eyes opened today and was getting around. Nice. So yeah. you know, nice. she, she, she is getting... Nice. She, when I first saw the picture of the baby, she didn't look like no baby because she was only like four months, I mean five months. Cause the baby was due next April. Mm. But now she looked like a real baby. And oh. I can see her God, I mean, I mean, you can see the you can see the growth of her being out of her mother's stomach. Oh, mm. she's growing. No, she's having hair, she got a little bit of hair now. <laughs> and the, the, and the son said, said if, of her, and she our eyes are just moving around, just looking around. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I thank God and I thank God for everyone that was praying because I told P some of you know the leaders that you know that what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I thank God so much. Now I uh, don't think you know she have a hole in her heart, but they said they're giving her medication that will close the heart because that's normal for a premature baby. Mm -hmm. And the doctor yeah. says she moves so much. She, she the youngest one in the um into the house into the um into the you know into that unit and she moving she move more they have to sedate her because she's moving so much and I you know I thank everyone that I mean she looks just like a baby now she just look like a baby and then name is Hardem. her name is like Winners you know, and I thank everyone that is praying for her.
Well, you know what? That's the it. Aaron, Psalm 136 is appropriate for these times that we're going through now, especially your baby. Because you know mm -hmm. God's mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. So Psalm 136 is quite appropriate for me to share with you. And I, it's a blessing. So when you get the opportunity, take that psalm, take it to your bosom, and hold on to it. Your grandbaby is going to be okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, Bishop and everyone, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Praise God. I wanted Amen. to share a testimony. I, uh, I, I will say that uh, this he, God is a God of timing. Yes. Mm. God, God of timing. Last year this time, I had an accident right before Thanksgiving, and my other car was totaled, and my left hand was, um, was messed up pretty badly. I went through a therapy. And to tell you how awesome God is, uh, the car was totaled. I was going through therapy. I got a uh, able to get a settlement out of that, and I was able to. God was able to bring things together. That before we were sent home to have to work from home, I was able to get the new vehicle and everything, Praise and and Amen. and was almost finished with all my therapy before all this had hit. And God is just awesome. It happened so quickly. You know, my my wife, she, uh, the prophet, is she us? Uh, you said, listen, we're gonna believe God. That's gonna all work out. God moved so quickly. He had everything timed out between my insurance company, between getting all the other work that we worked out, to me getting to car sense to get the car. And I'm telling you, God is a God of timing, and I can rejoice of how before the pandemic hit, where we had to stay home since since March to work from home, all that was done long before that. I like. God is just too awesome. Too awesome. Hey, so he is a God of timing, oh, and we yes. rejoice about that. Yes. As Amen. it just says, in the fullness of time is come. Oh, Christ yeah. came, yeah. born of a virgin. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is a God of timing. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. I just want to say, this is Minister Evelyn. I just want to say that God is a healer yes, <laughs> yes. Myself. oh my god he took me through the valley of the shadow of death and out. hallelujah and i just <laughs> i am so grateful i, oh. I was doing uh bishop uh yesterday i think it was i want to do a cartwheel when i come back to church <laughs> <laughs> well go ahead <laughs> that's 77 just cartwheel all the way around the church that's all right. <laughs> I <get it. laughs> but I, I i'm so appreciative of what god is doing in our lives and this next year is the year for the saints i prophesy it right now it is our year and we're gonna be in the glory of god and god is ishama oh mm. glory he's gonna use us greatly yes. next year god amen. bless you and merry amen. Merry amen. Merry amen yes yes amen mm. Well, hello, Mama Dot. Where are you? I miss you. I know you're here somewhere. <laughs> no, she's <here> somewhere. <laughs> and Sister Crystal A and Elder Baytop. This is Sister Wanda. Loving you. Hey, you looking good. How you doing, everybody? I miss you. Hi. How are Hi, you? Hi, Sister Wanda. Hi. Hello. How are you? I spoke about Sister Crystal. Hi, Sister Denise. Hey. I spoke about you. How you doing? I spoke about both of you this morning. It's like a real oh. haven't spoken to you. And here you are. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so happy. I'm all right now. Thank you. It is a blessing to all of you. I'm telling you. It is a blessing. God is so good. You know, I'm overwhelmed. I, you know, my thing is grateful. I can't do but just be grateful all the time about him. What he is doing in our lives, doing in the body of Christ and doing in our lives individually and collectively. I'm so blessed to be here, to see all of you. I'm telling you, God is good. He's really good. Very good. And I, I can't wait to follow him. Whenever God will say, let's go do it again, watch me run the HFDW. <laughs> <laughs> running. Oh. I'm running. Oh. Yes, I, I, I miss hugging and kissing my sisters and brothers. I know oh. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 I know that's right. I miss that. Yeah. That is very important to me to have that closeness with my family. Yeah. 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 Important. So I'm going right now. The moment you open up them doors, I'm running up. <laughs> 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 
just want to Anyone else have a testimony? Anyone share? I just want to I, I, just I want want think some, my, some people are too close to each other. Yeah. I just yeah. want to thank God for getting us through this so COVID sicknesses that yes. we had and, yes. and looking at people smiling. I'm looking at Wanda smiling. Now, he, he is a healer. He's yes, also he a protector. Yes, he yes he is. Even though he said, you know, you're all, you, you were going to get it. We had it for some reason. He said, you're going to get it, but I'm going to protect you. Yes, man. I'm going to get it. <laughs> Look at so I'm going to take care of you through it, whatever. Yes, he yeah. So yes, he's our right. protector. Yes. Just remember, he's got a Amen. cover and over. He yes. protects yes. us through everything, even what comes in the future. Oh, we we'll protect Yes, us. Amen. Way Amen. better Amen. than the vaccine. Amen. He's the vaccine. Already done. Amen. 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 Already done. Already done. Yep. I know y'all. I hope they he protect you from that cat behind you. That's my buddy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. No, no, I didn't mean. Well, I that, just man. want to take the time to thank God for all of you that prayed for us, brought us food, Amen. Amen. sent us medicine, fruits, water, vegetable. Yes. This list Amen. would be too long for me to name each one individual. Oh, so mm. I thank God for all of you. I thank God that I can sit here tonight. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Yes. I feel good. Amen. I never, ever stop believing that God would heal us. Amen. 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 He's a healer. Hallelujah. He's a healer. He's good to be back. Yeah, and to see you back. Yeah. Coming soon. Yeah. 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 I'm glad to know that you two yeah. are, are recovering as well. Yeah. All of you. All of you that's going through it, God has protected you in the midst of, and I love that. I'm so grateful. This is the first time I've ever been on the Zoom, and to run into all my sisters and my brothers is such a big nice. deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big deal to me. So it's a oh, look good. All of you look so good to me. Look good. Amen. You look good to us too. Amen. Yes. You do. Yes. To God be the glory. Amen. Oh, look at Sister Gwen. You're so beautiful. She look beautiful. Yes. 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 Got a hair Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully y'all look beautiful. Yes, they did. <laughs> Amen. Oh, good. That's Amen. beautiful. Hallelujah. Having that beautiful smile, sitting in you. beautiful. I tell you, I love y'all. These smiles y'all having on your faces. I'm gonna take you all my so if you about to ask why I'm laughing. I'm gonna say because God put it on my face because I saw the glory of God through all my sisters and brothers today. Mm. Amen. 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 I just need to ask the angels, what song are we singing tonight? I understand they invited me to sing. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. Amen. You're right. Amen. Hallelujah. Ready. Well, laugh at your jokes from now on. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how bad it is, you laugh. You gotta laugh. You're gonna get laugh. <laughs> you come across the aisle. Seriously, seriously, Wesley, on the back end of all of the sickness that we had, he was sicker than I was. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's hard headed. Yeah. Um, you can't say that out loud. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I thank God. And, and I told him, I said, I need my husband back because yeah. he has very little strength. You know, and I'm like, uh uh. uh <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm, I was accustomed to him, you know, doing almost everything around the house. But, almost? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> almost everything. But I thank God. And I, and I say it again. We are so grateful to God to be in the land of the living. Amen. Yes, ma'am. That's right. So, oh. many, so many people you see on television. Oh, yeah. Die. Couples that mm -hmm. die in mm -hmm. seconds of one another. Yeah. People that, yes. you know, families just have died. come through this. And we just, we're grateful to God. This has been a year that we know and <laughs> that God has taught us to have complete confidence in him. In him. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. 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 All right, well, 
thank you so much for your your testimonies, Amen. And um, hey, I'm just I'm just I'm just delighted to be here uh, with all of you. And uh, uh, Nicholas Paulette, uh, did Megan go back yet? Or is she still here? Yes, she did. She went back um, okay. actually a couple of weeks ago, and that's. Um, okay. I, I, I apologize for arriving late to the party. I had to walk the dog and I actually had you guys walking with me because I had the phone and that was the phone that you heard. You couldn't see me, but um, I just wanna thank God for um, watching over her as she has moved to Nashville. I thank, of course, Elder Baggett and Bishop for you know all that they did in getting her there and helping her to get established. And thank you all for all your prayers and for, you know, the calls. She's received calls from people and she's just, you know, people have reached out to her and, and it's just such a blessing. As long as she's safe, that's all that matters. Amen. 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 Well, and yeah, so, pray for her. You know, that there was a, a bombing in uh, Nashville uh, mm. this morning. Mm. And so, oh, uh, I didn't reach her. I didn't, so, I didn't, I didn't see people. that. Keep her, um, keep her up in prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, Brother Wesley, are you and uh, Angel Harmony ready to worship? <laughs> uh, yes, we are. I, put him on I, you. I, I had a little lemon. I'm ready to go. I just wait. All right to now. Song is <laughs> uh, I, I don't advocate it, but can you put something a little? Strong in that lemon, that might put you out for a little bit. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, brother. Will Robert Tussin do? It's the start. Okay, Rachel and uh, Deidre and Jessica, we're ready. Mm -hmm. Am I mute?
testimonies, amen, that he's come and that he's delivered, he has saved, he has set us free, he has given us hope, amen, so, and indeed, he was, he is Lord, he was Lord at his birth, amen, worthy of our worship, worthy of our praise.
you glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, come all you faithful. Amen. Thank you for even coming tonight just to spend these little, these few moments together. Amen. Um, shout out to uh, Dr. Shayla Holland all the way from Chicago. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So um, I'm just going to just share a little a brief word with you tonight. And um, and then I'm going to um, maybe pull on some of the prophets. You know, if there's if there's a word that um, you want to release to us, you know, for this season, the next season that we're in, it's going to take just a few moments to do that as well. All right, so you can start priming the pump now, and uh, so you'll be ready. All right, because uh, we're not going to be here all night. Praise God, Hallelujah. And so. Um, I want to talk just for a few moments tonight about on the subject facts. Facts do matter. Facts do matter. Um, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Um, the gospel writer, that great historian, Dr. Luke, uh, says, this. Um, okay. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Uh, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And then uh, in John chapter 5, St. John chapter, chapter 5, verse 46, here the Apostle John writes this word, John 5, 46, for if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? And 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, Verse 19, we get there. The Apostle Peter says this, Second Peter 1, verse 19, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, amen, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts and so hey during this time <clears throat> you know um the world has done their done their best to try to eliminate the real reason for the season amen and they're just trying to you know destroy the whole concept and in some places you can't even say merry christmas which is really um ironic because you know christmas is really about jesus and it's so simplistic Amen. And so, um, but we understand that uh, uh, the exaltation of Jesus is is getting lesser and lesser. And as believers, we need to make sure that we're holding fast to that testimony of Scripture. And so, facts facts do matter. So, the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies may not be the most festive or evocative uh, motif or theme during this time, during, you know, uh, the Christmas narrative, the Christmas story, but what they do uh, accomplish that, what they do accomplish is that they prove the intent intentionality and the purpose of God for man's redemption through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the facts of Jesus' life matters. Okay. 
the Christmas narrative isn't just about having all the feels, you know, uh, it's more than just, you know, the shepherds singing and, uh, you know, uh, us having some type of, you know, um, goosebumps or some type of, you know, uh, feelings. Uh, it's about, it's about a God who promised men and women long ago that he would send a Messiah for them, a Messiah that would save them, a Messiah that would deliver them, a Messiah that would give them hope. Amen. And it's about God delivering, delivering on his promises centuries later at the place and at the moment of his choosing through the birth of his son, Jesus. Uh, Elder Green alluded to it a little earlier. In the fullness of time, God sent uh, his son, one of a one, under the law to redeem them. Amen. And so uh, my point tonight is that facts do matter. Facts do matter. Uh, prophecies concerning Jesus were of great of great detail, detailing everything from the place and manner of his birth to the way that he would die. Now, what I want to do is, I, you know, and there's so many, so many prophecies, and we're not going to go over all of them tonight. But I do want to kind of hit on on three, uh, three, three um, prophecies that speak about uh, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. All right, the first one is found in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and we have that fulfillment in Matthew 2, 1. So if somebody could get Matthew 2, 1 real quick, I would appreciate that as um, I go over to Micah 5, 2. All right, so Micah 5, 2 says, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you were little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. Now, does somebody pick up Matthew 2, 1 for me? Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Amen. And so in Micah 5.2, it, 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 it prophesies where Jesus would be, would be born. Understand uh, the prophecy uh, occurs about 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And so in Micah 5.2, he speaks of a ruler who would come out of the town of Bethlehem. It talks about whose going forth are from old, from everlasting. Here in, in, in the revelation of Micah chapter five is, 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 is Micah foresaw that this eternally existing one would be born in Bethlehem. And so it says that who's going forth are from of old, from everlasting. And so he speaks in reference to uh, the eternal one who would be born and not just uh, and not just, you know, being born, but also being more specific, you know, being very detailed, he would be born in Bethlehem. Amen. And so the question uh, you'd ask ourselves, well, why, why Bethlehem? Well, Bethlehem means bread house. Bethlehem is where bread comes from. Jesus identified himself as the bread of life. Amen. He alone can satisfy our deepest spiritual needs. Secondly, we want to look at um, the manner of his birth. I'm going to read Isaiah 7, 14, and somebody get Matthew 1, 23, uh, the fulfillment of that, okay? Matthew 1, 23. And so Isaiah 7, 14, the prophet writes again, uh, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall come, 
shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Someone have Matthew 123. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Okay, now, um, like Micah, this prophecy highlights, uh, highlights or, or sheds light on the divine status of the one being born, Emmanuel, God with us. Micah talk, talked about the one that was from everlasting, amen. Um, the virgin birth shows that salvation is a work of God alone. In the Old Testament, God raised up mighty people to deliver his people in, in miraculous ways. Some of the greatest Old Testament savior types were born to mothers who had difficulty conceiving, okay? Sarah was barren and she brought forth Isaac. Rebecca was barren. She brought forth Jacob. Rachel, I mean, uh, um, I mean, um, yeah. And uh, Rachel was barren and she brought forth Joseph. Samson's mother was barren and Hannah was barren and she brought forth Samuel. And so God worked against the odds to demonstrate his power and to manifest his glory. So it is only befitting, it's only right that the greatest deliverer, the greatest savior will be born against all odds. He would be born from a virgin. Amen. Matthew 1.18 tells us that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And so the, the theologians call this the hypostatic union where, uh, you know, uh, 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 Jesus is at the same time, he's fully God and he's fully man. He's the God man. He was fully God and fully, he wasn't 50% God, 50% man. He was 100% God and 100% man at the same time. And so, um, uh, yet, yet without sin. And that's why it was imperative that he would be born uh, uh, of the Holy Spirit and not from the sperm of a man. If that, if that, if that were the case, if facts matter, if that were the case, he would have been sinful because he would have inherited the same nature that you and I inherited, that Adamic nature. Romans 5.12 tells us, wherefore by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon men, for all men have sinned. But Jesus knew no sin. He was, he was, he was perfect. And so um, the virgin birth made it so that Jesus would be our perfect representative sharing our humanity, but not sharing our guilt nor sharing our sin. In Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verse 15, it says, uh, yeah. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Amen. And so um, prophecies, facts that really matter, that talked about uh, 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 what town he would be born from, uh, the manner of birth, that he'd be born of a virgin, and then uh, thirdly, uh, just for our, our meditation, is simply this, that uh, the purpose of his birth, okay, facts do matter. Why was he born? Why was he born? If he doesn't, if his life does not synchronize with the facts that uh, were stated hundreds of years ago, then it, it really invalidates uh, um invalidates who he is. Amen. And so um, the purpose of his birth, Genesis chapter three, uh, verse 15, we hear what Moses 
uh, wrote centuries before. He says, uh, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. All right, so it even goes into further detail about you know, the kind of death he was going to die. Uh, and we see that happening on the cross. In Colossians 2, verse 15, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, the apostle Paul says, says this. Uh, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing triumphing over them in it. Amen. Hebrews uh, chapter 10, looking at verses 5 and following. Hebrews chapter uh, uh, I don't know. I probably didn't go. Hebrews. I think we'll go uh, chapter 6 in Hebrews. I know I said 10. Oh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with um, uh, verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the, world, into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offerings, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you do not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, Oh God. And so he came to do the will of the Father. And that was to offer his life as a sacrifice to atone, to atone for the sins of mankind. Right. First John chapter 3, uh, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. Here. Uh, the Apostle John says this. Hmm. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. That the devil would no longer have autonomy or authority over us. Amen. That we would no longer be afraid of this thing called death. That you know, uh, Jesus would come to destroy the works of the devil, and so um, facts, facts do matter. Amen. Facts do matter. The facts were given centuries before the manifestation of the facts proved their veracity. Facts matter because they eliminate any controversy. First Timothy chapter three, verse 16 says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. And so the reality is there should not be any controversy. This is not really a controversial issue because facts matter. And the facts were given unto us centuries and so Jesus didn't come on the scene as, you know, um, you know, somebody who just, you know, popped up on the scene. No, uh, century before it was prophesied, facts were given, detailed, details were given, how he would, how, where he, he would be born, how he, he would be born, why he would be born. And the fulfillment of the facts gives uh, validity that the facts were genuine and the facts were true. Facts, facts do matter. 
I mean, you know, we live in an age right now, I mean, uh, where, where some folks don't like facts. They try, to, they try to change the facts. They try to rearrange the facts. Uh, facts do matter. So there should not be any controversy. Why? Because simply it, detail, detail information was given centuries before any of it even came to place. So if it did not pan out uh, the way that the facts uh, uh, spoke about it, then we would have controversy. But there's no controversy. All the details, the, all the minute details, all the detailed details from even from where he was born, how he would, how he would be born, the purpose for his birth, we're all, we're all fulfilled to give validity, to give credence that facts do matter. Micah and Isaiah uh, uh, bears you know, this point out that the Bible said in 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, that God was manifested in the spirit. Amen. Micah talked about Micah talked about him whose going forth was from everlasting. Isaiah said his name shall be called Emmanuel. It talked about the, the divinity, uh, the divine, how, how he would be divine, how he would be God. And so if anybody came and wasn't God, it wouldn't be congruent with the facts. It wouldn't give validity to the facts. But we have a, 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 a sure word a sure word of prophecy. We have a detailed description of how our Savior would come and what he would do. And not only that, but John 1.1, 1, 1 it bears out the fact. In the beginning, you know, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Without controversy, great is the mystery of God, Godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. John 1.14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And then the fact also uh, is recorded in Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to uh, read that for us, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 17. It says, uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that were in the heaven and that are on that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Amen. And so without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifested in the flesh. And we come to celebrate him. Uh, you know, Christmas is really about the incarnation. God, Emmanuel with us. Uh, God who took on flesh and dwelt among us in order to redeem us, in order to bring hope, in order to bring give us life, in order to accomplish the perfect will of the Father uh, for uh, for lives. So what was that stake here? You know, God, 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 uh, uh, who, who, who had promised, who had promised centuries ago that he would send a Messiah. Uh, uh, that promise is fulfilled when Jesus takes on flesh, when he becomes Mary's baby, Amen. Uh, uh, and, 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 and these prophecies that were in great detail, detailing everything from the place and manner of his birth to the way that he would die. Amen. And so um, God had to, God had to defend his word. God had to defend the facts that he established and that he had given unto unto man hundreds of years ago. And we had that fulfillment in him whom, whom we call Emmanuel, amen. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people 
from their sins. Amen. Praise the Lord. And facts, facts do matter. Amen. And so um, before we close out in the next few moments, if um, if there is a word that any of the prophets want to release at this time, um, we're going to take the next few moments to do that. I apologize, Bishop. I have no prophetic word tonight. That's all right. You don't have to apologize. Amen. We still believe you're a prophet. <laughs> Merry Christmas, uh, everyone. Dr. Yvette, amen. I had to switch places with Mert really fast. But um, when you said, um, prepare yourself for a word, I was like, okay, I thought I was going to really be able to listen to what you <laughs> said, but the Lord, while you started talking, the Lord said something to me really quick. He said, warning. I heard the word warning. And so um, what I just wrote down was, I heard the Lord say, there is a difference between prophecy and warning. Prophecy mm -hmm. is the foreknowledge. Prophecy is the foreknowledge. birthed out from God, these prophetic words about Christ's coming is just that, foreknowledge given to his servant, the prophet. Reveal his coming, but my warning will come in a different way in 2021. A statement and the definition of a warning, a statement or event that indicates a possible or impending danger, problem, or other unpleasant situation. In 2021, I will give you warning to take heed to these warnings because deliverance and safety is in the warning. Know and understand the place of God. It shall be clear in the day of reckoning. With reckoning being the action or process of calculating or estimating something. And the sentence that they used um, to give clarity to the definition says, last year was not by any reckoning a particularly good one. So it excites me and delight my heart that you would spend Christmas day with me and for me. It is to be mm. commended because others are doing many things, but you have come and have stopped to worship and spend time with me. I love you, my people, and you shall know it, said the Lord. And what I was thinking about is today that um, if you were not watching ABC, um, what came up in my mind when I heard the Lord say warning and that his warning is what he will give is they had a young lady singing in a temple. Sure. Uh huh. And she was at the altar and she was very demonically possessed. She had these things in her eyes. And mm. she had on a very uh, thin dress that was see-through and she was wiggling and she had on these long nails. So as I looked at the TV, I said, I dare them do that to God because mm. they didn't have any knowledge or knowing of God to think that even though she was singing a Christmas carol, that it was okay for her to be at the altar in the presence of God with the way that she was mm. dressed and the way that she was behaving. And so when I heard the Lord say that warning, that's exactly what it will be for us, a warning for us. So we have to take heed to the warning because there's a difference between prophecy that God will give to his servant and when God actually warns us of something. So we want to be mindful to know and understand the place of God because it shall be clear in the day of reckoning when he knows his calculated time is for things that shall come. And so as the people of God, we have to make sure that we're in a place where we know and we understand and see God so that we're not caught up like the world in doing so many other things versus being in his presence and giving him the things that belong to him in his time and in his season. Thank you, Bishop. 
Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Um, thank you all for tuning in and coming together. And um, may the rest of your evening be 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 blessed. Amen. And um, see you on um, Sunday, Lord willing, via Zoom. Um, uh, there's um, there's no 5 a.m. prayer tomorrow morning. Uh, and so, um, looking forward to seeing you on, on Sunday, amen, amen. at 1030. Bishop, are we, All right. are we still, uh, being at home? Are we able to come to, the, come, come to the church building or are we still doing Zoom completely? We're, st we're going to be, uh, virtual on Sunday. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Bishop, Denise, you have anything second, you want to say? I'm, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I'm typing that word in the chat box so that people can okay. take a picture of it with their phone. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, Denise, you have anything you want to say?